Hey everybody, it's Brackley Modern, and we're doing a groomer meme review right here. It's Disney Castle, Epstein Island. Pretty funny. Your 30-year-old groomer constantly talks to 5-year-olds about Ildos. Spends entire history class coming out. That We have videos of... Okay, guys, keep a list of these. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna we're gonna go and see how many we can check off later in our own videos. I promise you, we'll get these. Uh, things child's parents have no role in parenting. Not a lot. Um, I'm gonna groom. Seemingly gives hormones to children. Kindergartner just wants to say gay to third grader while explaining how to have uh, relations. Doesn't ha have own kids. Uh, just wants to play off yours. Your child's gender isn't your uh, their choice. It's my choice. Here you have your 30 year old groomer, another meme. Uh, adopted a kid just to groom. Made gay lifestyle political issue just to groom more kids into cult. Active member of NAMBLA. Six thousand sex partners. So, what is this? San Francisco gay choir literally sing, sings, We're coming for your children. No. Uh. Now this is really weird. Uh, the National Review, the groomer accusation is counterproductive. Okay, Klein. <laughs> okay, groomer is what we're saying now to people. Yeah, here's your groomer. All right, what's going on with the tweets now? If you wanted to pause it. So the don't say gay bill is actually also the don't say straight bill. Here's a section if you wanted to pause and screenshot. Because of Florida's choice to keep things vague, so there's a big umbrella of which to discriminate, they also included straight people. So these are the straight things that you won't be able to talk about in Florida schools when this is enacted. Gender signs need to be taken off all of the bathroom doors. You cannot line up kids in girl rows and boy rows. You cannot talk about traditional families or a family with a man and a woman because that's heterosexuality. And I don't want y'all to talk about that in school. You won't be able to celebrate Mother's Day or Father's Day in school. You won't be able to celebrate Christmas in school. I don't know what orientation the Immaculate Conception was, but I don't want my child subjected to that. What other examples of heterosexuality prevalent in K through third grade can y'all come up with? Let me know in the comments. So the don't say gay bill is actually also the don't All right. Uh, so that's, that's a psycho teacher. You keep them away from your kids. Patrice, tonight's meeting saw more than 40 people speak in a lively school committee, meet, school committee meeting here at Barrington High School. And it's one where a lot of people express frustration and confusion. Barrington parents, students, and taxpayers looking for answers. Is less important than math or science? After the school district, widely considered one of the best in Rhode Island, decided... Oh, this is uh, something else. Something else. Sorry. Ready. When they've been exposed to information, they're ready to learn about it, whether you think they are or not. And the research says that there is no age too young to talk about pretty much anything. If they know about it, they're ready to learn about it. Right? So there is no you know, what we think is always age appropriate. It is if they don't know about it. If they haven't been exposed to it, then yeah, you can give them time to develop. But once they're exposed to it, and social media is going to do it, right? I know some kindergartners in the school with cell phones. Yeah. These kids have cell phones. Therefore, what? You want to talk to them about what? When they're how old? What is wrong with you? Mine had a cell phone. And so Sounds like a problem. They get access to information. They can they can learn quickly. The world is teaching them faster than probably you are. Well, maybe we don't want that. And so um, the extent to which we can have conversations with parents around um, how do we want to um, approach talking about LGBTQ plus because we don't want to talk about that kids. Their students as early as kindergarten who are identifying um, as uh, non-gender conforming, uh, non-binary, 
um, that are, are in it. Um, and so because they're in our school, they're in our classrooms, then that becomes a responsibility on the adults to say, okay, um, I have a student who identifies this way. And so it's my responsibility to make sure the classroom invite, is inviting to, to them, uh, just like it is to someone who might be um, Asian, Laotian, um, Korean, um, African. Um. Well, obviously classrooms should be inviting everybody, but they can be inviting by just not talking about certain issues. Here's another crazy one. Because I've been getting this question a lot lately, I am going to use this space to answer it. And that is, as a preschool teacher, a drag king, and as a member of the LGBTQ community, how do I feel about the new legislations for like the Don't Say Gay Bill or the reporting of transgender kids? And while I don't see things like that too much in preschool, my opinion on it is that I don't care what the government tells me to do. I am going to do what I think is best for the health and safety. And that includes mental health and safety and emotional health and safety of my kids. I will never let... Whose kids? Whose kids? Whose kids? My kids. Emotional health and safety of my kids. They're not your kids. They don't belong to you. You have no rights over these kids. Every single one of those parents could choose to withdraw their child from the school if you were the teacher and you would have an empty classroom. And then maybe the next classroom you started teaching, all those kids could withdrew, choose to withdraw their kids from you. And you just end up teaching no kids because you don't have a right to kids. You creepy person. I will never let any child come through my classroom feeling unloved or ashamed for who they are. So because I've been getting this question a lot lately, I... So, here's another one. Um, I ended up telling the, my students that I was gay. Um, and how it came up was one of the students, I uh, was like, you know, my mom thinks that you're gay because of your voice. And I'm like, maybe, maybe not. How about you say, that's an inappropriate thing to talk about. Okay? And you say, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. That's all you have to do. And say, children, I'm not, ta I'm not comfortable talking about that with you. Can we drop the subject? That's all you have to do. <gasps> You're making me erase my identity. No. No, just like if there was a male teacher married to his wife and the kids were asking him like, oh, your wife's pregnant. How'd that happen? He. I don't want that teacher saying stuff in front of my child. Explaining how het, how, how babies are made. Because it's, it's not biology time, it's history. So, so they were asking me if I was, because I kind of alluded that I was. So I kind of let them wonder and ponder on it. And I have like, um, you know, like the LGBT uh, promotional, uh, this is a safe community kind of stuff, the rainbow stuff all up in my room. And I told them, I'm like, if you look around the room, that should give you an answer to your question. So I did officially tell them, um, they, of course, went berserk, so instead of teaching social studies today, um, they just asked me a whole bunch of questions about being gay. Social studies, history, same thing. So I think it was pretty well. Um, so let's, let's emphasize that last part there. Social studies today. They, of course, went berserk, so instead of teaching social studies today, um, they just asked me a whole bunch of questions about being gay. This is what we are trying to avoid. Now, imagine if we there's a whole bunch of kids asking a, ta a teacher about what it's like to be straight. That'd be weird too. What's this? Dragtastic summer camp, ages 12 to 18. Oh my god. Gross. 
I cannot teach in Florida. LGBTQ educators fear fallout from new school law. Nice knowing ya. As an elementary school teacher in Florida, um, this new bill has really been weighing on me a lot. I teach first grade, which means my classroom is one of the ones that will be directly affected. Um, for those of you who haven't been in the classroom in a while, one of the things that teachers always do at back to school night and meet the teacher and things like that is they like sent home this cute little like meet the teacher thing where it has like a little bio about us some of our favorite stuff just so that you know who we are since when since when maybe i'm just a boomer now because i graduated School, you know, I went to school in the 90s and the aughts. And my teachers didn't, I didn't remember my teachers ever give me a little slip introducing them, saying what their interests are and what their hobbies are and who they're married to. How do I do that next year? Don't. Do I lie and <laughs> not talk about my marriage? Do, do I pretend I'm not, single? How about you don't talk about yourself? Do I invalidate my spouse's stance? <coughs> Obviously not. We need to validate everybody's stances. All people need to be protected. All gender, identity, and expression. Every uh, And uh, no one should be made to feel violence or hatred. Or do I put my job on the line? Yes, quit. To introduce myself. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna, one more time, you guys. This is nuts. As an elementary school teacher in Florida, um, this new bill has really been weighing on me a lot. I teach first grade, which means my classroom is one of the ones that will be directly affected. Um, for those of you who haven't been in the classroom in a while, one of the things that teachers always do at back to school night and meet the teacher and things like that is they like send home this cute little like meet the teacher thing where it has like a little bio about us, some of our favorite stuff, just so that you know who we are. How do I do that? Why do you do that? Who cares about you? You're the teacher. I don't remember any of my teacher's names. Maybe Mrs. Olson. I don't. I don't know. Uh, uh, people don't care about you. Te the, the students most of the time they hate you because you give them work. <laughs> you. Oh, whatever. We're, we're done here. We got one last one here. People don't want to talk about gender and sexuality in classrooms, um, specifically for the reason that students won't understand. Um, no, 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 no. We just... We... Childhood innocence is something that should be preserved, but many on the left think that that is an, a a notion of white super and that is a legacy of white supremacy childhood innocence because black children don't get to experience childhood innocence because they experience racism as a young child so therefore they're against the idea of childhood innocence and they want to rob the children of their innocence maybe some of this is harder than good faithness but there's no way to stop the bad faith actors, okay? I heard this great analogy. Some people would say, oh, well, no, who signs up for to join a teacher to be to a, 
groom children. That's so terrible. Why would you accuse them of wanting to groom children? They didn't do that. They beca they, they become teachers because they want to help students. Uh, I'll I'll flip it back at you. We, who becomes a priest because they want to molest kids? You be, most people become priests because they want to help their community. They want to help the you know the spiritual lives of people. When they join the, the 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 priesthood and stuff, that's what they're doing. So the same thing of teachers. Then, anyways, way more people are molested at schools and churches. Let's continue. We're gonna back up a little bit here, actually. It makes me very angry when people don't want to talk about gender and sexuality in classrooms, um, specifically for the reason that students won't understand. Um, because Larry, uh, you never would have known. That's that's how I I think I would be. Um, I remember one of my teachers literally he made it a point to like never mention his politics in front of us. He he like he's like you guys will never know if I'm a Democrat or Republican. Good for him. That's how friggin' teachers should be. And uh, yeah, I didn't know anything about their fucking personal lives. Thank God. My experience with teaching, that is never the case. Um, I'm a non-binary teacher and I use the title mix. Um, today I had 12 new students and I just go, Hi, my name is Mix Murphy Q. I use mix instead of miss. It's a little bit different, but I'm still a teacher just the same. And they got it right away. I got mixed instead of missed all day. Um, and it makes... It, it confuses me when people use that um, excuse that children won't understand because students are very intelligent and they're learning all day. It's not hard for them to learn a different type of title. It makes me very angry. It's not the act of them learning a new word that we don't want. It's the explaining. Why does she have a different title? Well, because she's non-binary. What does that mean? Children are always learning. And now we have to explain what non-binary means to children. Well, some people, they don't fit on the gender spectrum. What does that mean? You know how you like girls and daddy likes, you know, daddy likes girls and mommy likes boys? Yeah. Some people don't. Why? You don't, you don't, seriously, you don't think this would happen if a kid? They keep asking why and why and why and why and why. And so if parents... Uh, we can avoid these conversations if you don't start them, you groomer. Am I am I right? Am I on a line here? Anybody? I think I'm I think I'm on point. Okay, what's this article say here? I can't I can't talk to your kids about inappropriate subjects anymore, and I'm mad. After weeks of controversy, Governor Ron DeSantis today signed the parental After weeks of controversy, Governor Ron DeSantis today signed the Parental Rights in Education Bill surrounded by young children. Oh my, oh, oh, oh. Instruction and conversation about sexual orientation and gender identity for public school students in kindergarten through third grade. And after third grade, those curriculums need to be age appropriate. The law also gives parents the ability to wield civil lawsuits if they feel the policy is violated. The legislation, which has been referred to by opponents as the Don't Say Gay Bill. That's weird. Has sparked national outrage. Today, the governor and potential 2024 presidential candidate once again. <laughs> That's a weird, look at that weird flex. They're like, hey, can you please run and not let Trump run, please? Putting himself at the forefront of America's culture wars. Supporters say the law lets parents determine when and how to introduce LGBTQ topics to their children. We will make sure that parents can send their kids to school <sighs> to get an education, not an indoctrination. Oh my God, this is terrible. Tom Elmay is running for state office in light of recent legislation. This bill won't stay in effect forever, but it will be in effect long enough to communicate to our youth and to the country that Florida isn't the place for you if you are different. What do you mean? His husband Jeff and their 12-year-old son worry this is a step backwards for equal rights. There are many people my age who grew up not having any acknowledgement that people like us even existed in the world. 
What? Y'all understand? <laughs> courage. It take for these children to show up every day. Florida's first openly gay state senator, Chevron Jones, broke down debating this bill. Today, he has a message for the law's backers. When their children come and have these conversations with them, I hope and pray that they have the right words to say, and I hope they have the arms long enough to hug them, to let them know I love you anyway. Around 15 states, from Tennessee to Louisiana, are now considering legislation. Oh! LGBTQ issues are addressed in the classroom. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Now this is the real, the the true crux of this topic here. Republicans ban a something like "Don't talk to kids about sex." Democrats rush out. And say, what do you mean we can't talk to kids about sex? And also, this bill is targeting gay people because you're making it so people can't talk to children about sex. You're targeting the queer community when you make this bill preventing adults from talking to children about sex and grooming them. And we're all like, whoa, are you saying the queer community grooms children? And they're like, "How dare you say that? That's inappropriate. They that's they don't they don't groom anybody." All right, everybody. I gotta make sure I'm I'm within the YouTube's guidelines here. Uh, I'm not prom. We do not on the radically mod promote or condone violence against any individuals based on their gender identity, expression, or sex, gender, sexual orientation, or any other category. Make them make them a minority. We love all those people. In fact, I am transsexual myself. I I am transsexual. Now YouTube, you can't ban me because I am a protected class minority. I am also black. And I am uh I also identify as a 5-year-old. So, I am a I'm a transsexual gay black 5-year-old. These are not insults. This is how I identify YouTube, okay? I am transsexual, not an insult. I am black, not an insult. I am a five-year-old, not an insult, okay? Because YouTube doesn't like it sometimes when I speak this way. And anyways, we'll cut that out of the video, maybe. Maybe we won't. I'm rambling here. What? Guys, leave, leave your comments down below. Why, why do you think uh, the Democrats get so mad when you ban common sense topics? When you, when you ban common sense stuff like talking to children about inappropriate topics. I think it's because the left can't handle boundaries. They can't handle rules. They just got to break them, violate them. They got to violate these rules like like uh, like the youths. All right, rack the moderate out of here.